not to be outdone. Then there was the comic legend, another Oscar winner, groundbreaking filmmaker, and international cultural icon. He began his career over 80 years ago, and he's still working. He gave me one of my most cherished, memorable, and moving interviews. But the first time I went to interview Jerry Lewis in Las Vegas, his people told me he had just sent a British crew packing and not to expect much. Thankfully, we hit it off. Here's Jerry Lewis and I talking about his beloved partner, Dean Martin. You're in Atlantic City, you're at the 500 Club, and you call a singer that you only met once or twice, Italian singer Dean Martin. What made that act work from that first night, and how choreographed was it? How much planning did you all do before you went out the first time? None. No planning. We both went out on stage and looked to save our lives because if we didn't do a show at midnight that night, we'd have been wearing cement shoes. I'm <laughs> quoting Skinny Demato. Oh, and, and we did, Dean as a single performer would do four songs, it's 12 minutes. Mm -hmm. I did an act that ran 13 minutes because I did a dumb act to recordings. Pantomime. Between Dean and I, we didn't even do a half hour. So the boys came backstage after the show and said, uh, Jerry, you said that you two would do some funny things together. That's why we brought him in. Oh. When are you going to do that? I said, we, we never do it the first show. We <laughs> plan everything after the first show. <laughs> and I'm writing on a piece of rye bread paper that the sandwiches came in, and I'm writing a rundown of ideas that I took from my dad, from burlesque, from every show I ever saw, and we did two hours and 20 minutes, mm. not knowing what we were doing. The minds locked together, unlike anything I'd ever seen in my life. Mm. My mind locked into his, his locked into mine, and we worked that first night no differently than we did the 10th year. You were shaping this a lot more than what the audience could see. I was stunned to learn you all were the same height. How did you account and adjust that for the visual, to create an impression, an illusion for the audience that you wanted? I got his shoes and put a quarter of an inch heel on him so he'd be that much taller than me because we were both six feet tall. Mm -hmm. And I needed him to stay straight, including the shoes, because the shoes gave us what I needed to have the audience see, which was mm -hmm. like this. I know that I sat with Dean and I said, what we have to do is to do nothing. Nothing. Meaning, let's take what we have settled on, stay with it, and make it the formula for everything else we do. You got to you gotta drink milk. I don't want no milk. Rocky, you see that he takes his milk. I'm with you. Yeah. Get out of Wait, Miss Bond. All right, you're going to get your milk. No, Rocky, not that, Rocky. Yeah. Uh, Rock, give me a break, Rocky. No, you're going to get it. Oh, Rocky, give me a break, Rocky. No, Rocky, give me a break, Rocky. Drink your milk. No, I don't. Drink it. It's good for you. Okay, this is a good time to bring up this question. This is something I know near and dear to your heart. Laughter as healing. Oh, God, and yes. And how laughter can actually heal relationships, people. Tell me about this. You've spoken a lot about this at universities, before business groups. Everywhere in the world. What is it about laughter that heals? How does it heal? Well, I think you have to ask the man or the woman that laughs openly at things that may not be funny to us. Mm. But the people that laugh at things that get to them is magic, because mm. they didn't know it was coming. And not being a professional, they're not going to know the joke that's coming. Mm -hmm. So that however laughter comes to them, it's a fresh, it's almost a refreshing, cool water on your warm body. Mm. A woman 
came up to me at the hotel. I was playing here at the Desert Inn. I did a great show, two and a half hours, and I was really on. Wow. The show was over, and security tells me there's a lady outside that's crying, but bitterly, like a child. Huh. She has to see you. Let her in. She comes in. She says, can I hug you? I said, of course, I'll hug you back. <laughs> but if we hug hard, we'll go to the room. <laughs> So she says to me, Mr. Lewis, I want to thank you for tonight's performance. I said, thank you. She said, I haven't laughed in seven years. My son was killed in Saigon, and I haven't gotten over it until tonight. Mm. And because of what you did for me out there, I understand that I've lost my son, and mm. I'll deal with it. Mm -hmm. Wow. If you start to get a little loose, that'll make you pay attention. And isn't that the real importance of what you do? Sure, And Absolutely. what you've always done. Absolutely. While we're making money and while we're entertaining the public per se, there'll always be a half a dozen people in there that needed us more than the whole audience. Wow. Mm -hmm. And I never forget that they're there. They're always there. Yeah. People that will break your heart if you hear what they have to say. Mm. And when you, gen when you generalize that, it's a huge plateau, a beautiful portrait of people in need. Mm. And that gets my attention. As I close out, I'm going to tell a little secret on my producer here, Chris. When he walked into the room, he just said hello to you, and he came out. And he said, look, I've got tears in my eyes. I said, what's wrong? He said, when I walked in, I don't know. It was just being in front of Jerry Lewis. <laughs> but you know what? It's just what you're talking about. He's responding to all the memories of the laughs and the joy that you've given him and all of us all these years. And I'm delighted to have been with you for a little bit. I think you're about the best interviewer I've ever had. Oh, come on. Now you're making me blush. I've had a few, starting back with Tynan in London. Oh, wow. Kenneth and, Tynan. And Robert Benigun in Paris. And, and Olaf Newton in Sweden. I've had some heavy-duty people. I'll say. You're the best interviewer. And I've had thousands of them in my life. And you're the best. Well, you are articulate. You know what you're going to talk about. Mm -hmm. You're interested in the answer. That's the key. Yeah. You're interested in everything you ask me to see what the answer is. And that draws from me eager to do more for you. Well, you are awesome. And I'm so, it's an honor. Thank it's you. It's been one of the highlights of my career. Thank you.